The Roman Empire, in some form or another, existed for around 1500 years, rising from the ancient Italian capital and going on to dominate Europe and the Mediterranean. Stretching from Britain in the west to Iran in the east and North Africa in the south, the empire was forever at war, maintaining and expanding its gigantic borders. Yeah. <laughs> this made the life of a Roman soldier a tough and dangerous one, trampling all over the world, hoping to see out their service and reap the rewards of glory. And while the politics of Roman life was often complicated and ever-changing, no Roman emperor was ever stronger than his army. The success, and often life, of an emperor depended on his popularity with the legions and their successes abroad. The already massive Roman Republic was changed to an empire with the appointment of Augustus in 27 BC. In time, it became customary for a new emperor, on taking the throne, to appease his vast army and show respect by offering a gift of money, known as a donativum. If he didn't, he likely wouldn't last for long. The army were the kingmakers of Rome. Should an emperor make the mistake in allowing the treasury to run empty and their payments to be missed, or should a bloody and unpopular battle drag on for too long, it was not uncommon for them to turn on their previously beloved emperor and proclaim their popular general a replacement. It should be no surprise that they were so powerful. With unmatched military strength and millions to draw on from across a vast empire, their highly trained soldiers were an imposing force, responsible for maintaining their conquests and ensuring tax continued to flow to the capital. The army was commanded by higher class members of the Roman elite, comprising of individual legions containing around 5,000 men each. Those were then split into 500-man cohorts, which in turn were split into 80 to 100-man centuries. At its largest extent, under the rule of Septimius Severus, around 200 AD, the total army was 500,000 men strong. Throughout its history, the empire rarely had to resort to conscription. On turning 18, a poor farm boy with little to no other prospects will have viewed the army as a surefire way out of poverty. The military offered good pay, excitement, a chance to see the world, and a comfortable pension when all was said and done. But with so many men to choose from, the army could afford to be picky. Only the strongest and fittest were accepted. And, after months of intense training, turning the intake of multinational boys into an organized force that would outmatch most opponents across the globe, the long and grueling career of a soldier began. Roman soldiers were more than just sword-wielding warriors. The majority of their time was not spent in battle, but in constructing forts, bridges, aqueducts and roads. They were the great builders of the empire. They marched great distances in full uniform and armor, as many as 25 miles per day. It was exhausting work, marching in all weather, wearing their tunics, heavy metal armor and helmets, and carrying 70 pounds worth of equipment on their backs, including their sword, shield, a javelin, food, cooking pots, and everything needed to build the camp and barricades when the day's march was done. The soldier's immediate command was the centurion. He marched by their side, not high enough rank to use a horse, shouting, Dex Sin, Dex Sin, meaning right, left, right, left. The centurions were the backbone of the army, handling all the day-to-day -day aspects of the soldiers' lives, ensuring they remained orderly and disciplined, and, in battle, leading them from the front and issuing commands. After a long day's march of around six hours came to an end, the soldiers would stop to set up camp. Some would work shifts, keeping watch at night, and during their stay, their duties also included grim work like cleaning latrines. It was not always glamorous work. Any sort of distraction for the well-oiled and well-disciplined military machine was discouraged. So, soldiers were banned from getting married while in service. For many, 
young loves were left behind with a promise to return 25 years later, if they survived. And, until then, the only company they could enjoy was that of their fellow brother-in-arms. Each tent housed eight men, often from places all over the empire. For their meals, they were given a pound of pork and some bread, and in their downtime, they enjoyed gambling, swapping tales of past glories, and reminiscing about their forgotten homes. To deal with the pressures of military life, religion played a big role on the Roman army. At camp, sacrificial offerings of a ram or bull were made by the commanders, while religious officers and shrines were available for the prayers of the soldiers. Despite their rank, the day-to-day -day life of a centurion was an equally grueling one. Unless fortunate enough to be born into a military family or have a powerful relative as a sponsor, after signing up, it would take around 15 years for a common soldier to be promoted to the rank of centurion. In that time, they would have marched thousands of miles and had their bodies and minds scarred from the battles of constant war. Surviving a battle against an enemy was one thing, but the threats existed on many fronts for the Roman soldier. Disease was as big a killer as any, with plague in particular wiping out huge swaths of the legions, especially in conditions where wounds were untreated and the dead were left out to rot. For the centurion, while their men were usually loyal and obedient, they still had to watch their backs. Barking orders day and night and possessing a large rod which would be used to flog anyone who was insubordinate, centurions were usually despised by their men and often found themselves the victims of revolt among mutinous men at times of uncertainty or upheaval. When the day of a battle arrived, the legions were organized into tight groups, with the centurions conveying the orders to lead their small group of men to success. But unlike the higher-ranked elite commanders, centurions did not sit back and watch from afar. They were still soldiers, and experienced ones at that, and expected to lead their men from the front. The highest-ranked centurion, commanding the best century in the legion, was accompanied by the Aquilifa, and had the added responsibility of keeping the eagle standard safe from enemy hands. The Roman army used military tactics and strategy that often outmatched the opponents. Typically, a round of arrows would be fired by either side, with the Roman soldiers forming a shield wall, called a testudo formation, to keep themselves from harm. Making their slow approach, when close enough, the Romans would then launch their spears and then engage in the close quarters combat their short, light swords required. All around the battlefield lay the bodies of friends and foes, but more times than not, the depleted Roman legions would stand tall. In time, the surviving soldiers would be tasked with hauling the bodies and burying them. But for now, there was a chance to take a breath, having lived to fight again, though many were not so fortunate. The average Roman man lived for just 41 years, meaning most never saw out their 25 years of service. Death or retirement was the only way out of military service. A class-conscious Roman system limited higher command to the elites, making the hope of a promotion to a comfortable, safe, commanding position out of reach for the common soldier. And while the risk was great and the fear of death was a constant presence in their lives, the hopes of a relative peace or assignment to a fort in a quiet region was always a possibility. Some were luckier than others. For the average centurion, Having taken years to reach the rank, and with the bulk of their service behind them, the end was on the horizon, when it would all seem worthwhile. All soldiers earned a good wage and were given several acres of land when they retired, but a centurion was paid ten times that of their men. While it was a dangerous life and a lot of hard work, survival would make them very wealthy men, allowing them the opportunity to live in comfort and luxury that they would otherwise have no chance of attaining. They would hope their love back home waited for them and rest easy knowing their future children would enjoy all the privileges they had earned in service. Every day in the life of a Roman soldier was either a march to death or one step closer to retirement. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more. Once you do, why not march over and check out the rest of our videos? Glory awaits.